my name is Tony Hendricks, and I'm going to give you an overview of SelfCAD. SelfCAD.com It's an online browser-based 3D sketching, modeling, sculpting, and printing software. That's right, all of that in one package, online, in the browser, no downloading and installing software. Wherever you go, you just launch SelfCAD.com, and your projects will be there in the cloud. So let's jump in here. I'm going to give you an overview. I'm not going to explain how to do things. In the upper right hand corner of the SelfCAD interface, there is an eye, an information icon. If you click on that, there is a Learn SelfCAD link. You can use that link and it will give you access to videos, learning videos that will explain how to do these things. I want to show you what's in here really, really quick. So it's a typical layout for a 3D application. You've got your, your main windows made up. It's the 3D viewport, right? Uh, across the top, the very top, there's a main menu with, with typical Windows pull-down menus. And, but there's some specific things I want to show you. Let me pull out an object here real quick. So you can um, go to your projects. Like I said, all of your, project, all, all of your projects are going to be stored on the cloud. That's a big deal because as you're working, you see this autosave happening up here at the top. That's auto saving for you. I can't tell you how many times I've lost my progress because I get I get so engrossed in my project and I forget to save. Now you can save at any point in time by hitting save changes, but the auto save is saving to the cloud all the time. If you got to you got to pick up and go somewhere, you don't have to carry your files with you. Just pop on another computer wherever you go, go to selfcat.com and your projects are there saved at the most current state. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can save objects out and you can load objects in. For instance, um, let me pull in, where's my tree hut? There we go. So you can pull in uh, projects or objects that you've been working on from other projects and incorporate those in your current projects. That's pretty good. You can, um, of course, save pro objects out of this current project. You can import objects. So if you have a, a project that you are working on or a file from somebody else, you can pull those in. Um, you can save export files out. And there's all kinds of file formats for you to choose from. So you're going to be able to, to do whatever you need to do to go in any, any other package. So that's very good. Um, also in here, you'll see if we, as we go down the list, there's a select all, delete all, those kinds of functions. There's isolate. You can isolate options isolate objects to work on those reference image this is a nice one so whenever I'm working a lot of times I need a reference image so I can see what it is I'm I'm modeling I can I want to see the real object or an idea or a sketch that I've made and I'll look at a reference image what you can do here in this application is you can open up the reference image bring in an image in the screen and put it in the, th the viewport with you so you're not having to look back and forth between different monitors. It's really nice to have the reference image in there. Um, also, so in the, in, the, in the settings, you can go to preferences, you can have a dark theme, you can have a light theme. People like that, the customization. Uh, you can change your workspace settings. So the different sizes, you can add different planes in the background and change the colors of those. So you can customize, you can customize your, uh, your workspace, very nice. Uh, and there are some camera settings. Now, across the main menu, all the way to the far right, I told you about the information icon over there. Well, you can also, there's a share button to go to My Mini Factory, so you can share your models out to My Mini Factory. You've got to set up an account there. You can also pull models in from My Mini Factory. So you'd connect your account, set that up, browse right in SelfCAD to find different objects that you want to import into your scene, and you just import those in. So below that is the tools panel right across the top. Now that, that's where all of the functionality is that you're going to be using to make, to create and modify objects until finally you 3D print those objects. Now let me point out that from left to right, the functionality is laid out in a logical fashion. That is, as you work on a project, you're probably going to move from the more basic functions such as creating shapes to deforming and modifying shapes uh, move to the right to the more sophisticated function. So more basic on the left, more sophisticated to the right until finally you, you print them out on the far right. I'm going to show you all those in just a second, but I, wanna, I want you to see, I want to 
focus your attention real quick on the far right there's this object panel over here now as you begin to create objects in your scene um, those objects are going to show up in your object panel okay and um, over here you can select you can deselect you can change the color you can access these sub elements I'm going to show you what that is in a minute. So the faces, the edges, the vertices, this gives you the, the most direct manip manipulation over the finer uh, details of your objects. So you can select these things in this area of the object panel. You can uh, do different uh, selections like inverse selection. So whatever selected, you click the inverse selection, it'll deselect that and select everything that's not selected. There's cube selection. Uh, there's different views. So there's mesh view, there's wireframe view. There's mesh and wireframe view, okay, and then there's a, there's a smooth view. You can change the color of objects over here. You can change the material. There's different kinds of materials. There's actually you can actually wrap textures on objects. Let me just do this box. Now, when you click on certain functions, you're going to have this tool panel flyout that comes out on the left side. There are going to be uh, different different options in this flyout panel uh, based on the functionality. Okay, so in this case, we clicked on materials, so I can I can pick a different material. Um, let's just say so I can pick different, so I can pick a metal material. Okay, now you can also load an image. So you can also load an image onto these objects as well, and you can modify the different projections. So there's box projection, and you can change the shape of that. You can also set the opacity of objects. So you can see through objects. Um, now let me show you real quick when I was talking about when you can select, let me set this opacity back up to full. When I was talking about selecting sub-elements, this is going to be important in a moment. So I can select different parts of an object and manipulate those in different ways. That's where the power comes in, okay? So you can see how I can select the polygons and faces, I can select the edges of an object and then perform functions based on that selection. That's where you get to modify objects with the most control, is accessing these sub-elements. Now, you can lock objects so that you don't accidentally select them in case you wanted to do certain things to some objects and not others. You can hide objects, you can unhide. Let me select this. I couldn't hide it because it was locked. So you can hide objects and then unhide those as well. You can search, so if, if you keep good names, you can search your whole list for objects and find those here. Now, this whole center area is the 3D viewport. Now, that you're gonna be able to navigate around, rotate around, pan around, and you can use the rotation cube over here to do this as well. You can pop into specific views, the right view, you know, back view, top view, and there's also different projections. So right now I'm in a, I'm in a perspective projection. There's an orthographic projection, which is a straight on mathematical projection. It's not normal to our, our eyes, like perspective view, but it gives us the ability to see how things are aligned exactly when we're in orthographic view. So you can change right there. You can reset the camera view right there. Now let me show you the tool panel here and most of the functions that exist in here and what's, what's in this package. So the first thing you're going to do is figure out what you're going to make. Now, just as an example, I'm just going to show you, um, for instance, this is a top, real simple and, and a holder. It's just, it's a, it's a holder with a spinny top. Um, it's a cone shape. It's a box shape. Uh, and then I used the stitch and scoop to cut that out. And I'm going to show you how that, and it's a cylinder for the stem. Okay. So you would think, what am I going to create? Well, then you come over to these basic shapes and you can just you pull these out. I, like I said before, when you start to create, you're going to have the tool panel settings box pop out. And like I said, based on what the function is, you're going to have different settings that you're going to play with. And you can see what's really cool is you get real time updates based on your modifications in this window on the screen. Uh, and so I'm just going to pull in a few objects in here real fast. So you can see you can just create different objects and use those objects as needed. Okay. Okay, that's enough. 
So with these objects in the scene, you can see over my object panel, they've populated over there and I can search through the search through those. I can select, deselect, I can hide and unhide, and I can lock those. And let me point out in the 3D shapes functionality, there's this logical divider and you'll see this logical divider in some of the other categories. What that means is basically it's the same, same category of functionality, but there's something different about these functions. In this case, the shape generator, these are very powerful. You can, you can modify shapes here and then stack more shapes on top of that. Uh, the screw generator, you can create screws, nuts and screws right here with this nut and screw generator. You can create these spirals for different reasons. You can make springs with these if you needed a spring. And let me show you the drawing functions real fast. So you can actually freehand, so I could write my name here. You can freehand create objects in, in your scene as well. You can just draw those out. With a 3D sketch, that's, that's a little more involved to show you how that works. But basically, you can build using profiles and shapes. You can build the shape that you want with the 3D sketch. Now, let's look at how you move, rotate, and scale objects or even parts of the objects with the transformation tools. So you, you can see you can move an object. So like this cube, you can move the vertices or faces, like in this case. You can rotate objects or you can rotate parts of an object to manipulate. You can scale an object or you can scale a part of an object. So that's where you really get into being able to manipulate the objects really well. So that's, that's the translation tools. Let's look at deform. So in the deform tools, you'll see you have skew, taper, twist, bend, and inflate. And I've got an example of each one of these. Now this is, so the base cue that we started with right here, you can see the skew will skew the object or you can skew part of the object if you select, if you select the sub elements. You can taper, uh, you can twist, you can bend, you can inflate parts of the object or the object itself. That's the deform tool. Let's look at the modify tool. Okay, under modify, you have these functionalities. You have extrusion, add thickness, bevel, round object, and some other functions. Now, what I've done here is I've highlighted areas that I selected. Um, so, like I said before, you can go to an object. You can select the sub-element selection that you want to, to do. In this case, you can do polygons or faces. So, if you do save do faces, I have selection settings. I can go in loop selections, and that's what I've done here. I've done a loop. And then on top of that, I can do custom patterns and skip every other one. And that's how I did this. And with that selected, I did an extrusion here. You can extrude the faces how they are, or you can do individual extrusion faces so they go in the direction that they are. You can extrude out, you can extrude in. So thickness, I selected these rings, you deleted them, and then I added thickness. You can see how that's thin, added thickness here. You can do an outer thickness or an inner thickness. That's why this is One's larger, one's smaller, the hole is wider in the, in the other one. Um, you can do bevels. So what the bevel is going to do is going to add edges. It's going to round that. See how sharp these edges are? The bevel is going to round the edges here. You can round them um, a little bit. You can round them a lot. You can, also, you can also fill in or not fill in. So you get this cool sort of bounding box look thing. You can you know, apply that to a sphere and see what that does. Uh, the rounded functionality. So you can take a cube, uh, select the top portion of it. I use the taper function and then use the rounded and you can see at different levels how much rounding I do. You get this different shape, this smoother shape. So just this shape turned in, into these, this shape by using the rounded functionality. Very cool. Now let's look at the stitch and scoop. All right, for stitch and scoop, I've got a toilet roll holder here and I created this this uh, holder with the um, shape generator I did one shape then a layer then another shape then a layer and so on so now what I want to show you real quick is I'm going to isolate this object here and show you that I've already performed a stitch and scoop on this so I did a stitch and scoop difference what it did was it cut that shape out of this part now what I did I created multiple uh, copies of that, but the stitch and scoop difference is is very useful. I'm going to do that on the other side here. So let's let's show all again, and that brought back my actual holder. And I want to hide that one again so I don't uh, lose it. Oops, Control Z to undo that. 
So I only want to hide just that holder. One object is selected, hide that. Okay, now I'm gonna stitch and scoop on this side with that object because this one's not cut out, right? So let me show you this. If I move this out, I hit M to move it out. You see that's not cut. Now I'm gonna undo that to put it back where it was. I'm gonna select the holder and that object, gonna hit stitch and scoop, and I'm gonna do a difference, and I'm gonna use my cut and let it perform its function and there it cut that shape out now we have our holder i'll unhide that so there we have it now i'm gonna now the last thing i need to do is combine these pieces using stitch and scoop and do a union so now they're all going to be one piece now let's look at some of the tools all right i've got a scene here already created if i zoom in here you'll see i have this this little uh temple kind of thing going on and uh, I'm going to show you how I did that. Well, I created these shapes with the shape generator. And um, actually, the top one of them I created with this tool called Revolve. So if you have a, a profile shape, you can draw that out with the drawing tools, the 3D sketch tools. You just simply use uh, Revolve, and you can see how that created. Now, I did this really small, but you can see with the Revolve tool, you can create these shapes. You can also do part of the shape. Do you select that? Revolve. So you can create those shapes with Revolve using profiles. That's powerful. Uh, the next is copy offsets. Let me show you. So using this temple scene, I can create, I can grab this post, this pillar, and then go to copy offsets. And I want to pivot around and I want five copies of this. Hit copy. There it, it pivoted around the center. And I have the pillars to copy offsets. Oh, I also had that selected, so it copied those as well. Right? Uh, another cool tool is Loft. So let me show you how Loft works. If you have these profiles set up, you can select them. Let me deselect everything. So select these profiles in an order. And then I do the loft across those, and it creates this. It lofts that shape across those profiles. Magic Fix will make your objects ready to be 3D printed. Under the utility, there's there are things like align. So you can align objects to other objects. You can use measurement tools to see how far uh, objects are from one another or how far you might want to create things. There's guides, um, mirror objects, merge objects, remove duplicates. Now sculpting. Let me show you some sculpting here. So sculpting is done typically on more organic shapes is the, the use of it. So what I have in here is a, a scene where I use some basic shapes, created the basic form of a tree, and then I'll sculpt it to make it more realistic. Okay, so I'll select my tree. Now what I did is I used the stitch and scoop and did a union on all of these pieces uh, to make my tree. Now I'm going to hit sculpt, and now I can come in here with my sculpting tools and just begin to shape this out. And you can see, you can change the different sizes, the intensity of the sculpt. You can see how that works. So the sculpting tool can be very powerful. And again, it's probably for more organic shapes. Now let me show you image to 3D. So with image to 3D, you can literally bring an image in on top of this object and create a shape. So, I mean, you can just any picture, you can bring it in here, lay it on the object, and cut your shape out that way. And finally, you have the 3D print option. So you click on your object that you want to print, click 3D print, it takes you to the slicer. You'll slice your object and it'll just layer by layer show you what your print's gonna be, and then you send that to the printer. Well, that does it. I know it was a lot thrown at you really fast because there's a lot in here. That's what's so good about this software. I try to go as fast as possible, not to explain how to use it, but to show you what's in here. If you need explanations, if you need tutorials, go to the information icon, as I said before, in the upper right-hand corner. Click on Learn Cell CAD. There's tons of tutorials, things that will teach you how to use the software. Guys, have a good time using Self CAD and printing 3D objects.